Hey, that's my Swedish. My name is Beth. The picture that was just up there, I think I was wearing a dirndl. So I hope you're not disappointed that I'm not wearing my dirndl, although you're probably disappointed you're not carrying a liter of German beer. So I am American, you can tell from the accent, but I've lived in Europe for five years, and now I live in Munich, Germany, and right now, of course, we have Oktoberfest. But I'm very happy to be here. So let me tell you a, bit, a little bit about why I'm here. I'm going to talk a little bit today about a trend we're seeing that might be inspirational to you. It could be at least entertaining, hopefully, uh, but it will be relevant. A little bit about my background. Uh, I'm with the Lovey Awards, and you may know them. Anybody know the Lovey Awards? Okay, awesome. You should. The Levy Awards, you probably have heard of the Webby Awards. The Webby Awards has been the leading award for internet excellence for about 18 years. In fact, I submitted work when I was doing a digital women's publication 18 years ago. So I've been a friend of the Webbies for 18 years. I've been a judge for the Webbies. And four years ago, we started the Lovies because there's an explosion of innovation in Europe. And so we wanted to have an honor for Europeans by Europeans. So a little bit about the background, then I'll move on to why I'm bringing this up. The Lovey Awards, just like the Webby Awards, are selected by a panel of judges. We have an academy of about 1,000 people. It's all hand-selected, invitation only. And these are people who really have transformed the web. People like Stephen Fry, and uh, we have Imogen Heap, who, if you don't know her, she was with the Fru Frus originally, and now she's on her own crowdsourcing music. We have Robin Chase, who is at the forefront of the sharing economy with Zipcar and Buzzcar, and Vic Hayes, who's responsible for our Wi-Fi today. Thank you, Vic. And so the Webbies have had about 13,000 submissions of people who really think they've created excellent internet work. The Lovies is four years old. We've had 1,500 across 30 countries. And right now, we give these Lovey Talks, which is what I'm doing in town as well. We go to about 300 companies across 30 countries and talk to thousands of people about what they're working on. So we look at excellence in websites, video, online advertising, mobile, and social. So we have a pretty good sense of what's going on out there with about 15,000 submissions. And we see tons of trends. And one of the trends we're seeing today, which I'm sure you're seeing as well, and in fact, I'm contributing to it, is the idea of extremely spoiled consumers. Today, what we're seeing is an explosion of service apps and websites to create what we say might be the most entitled consumer the world has ever seen. So I'm going to take you through some, some examples and stories. I am no exception. We call this the age of expectations, the golden age of expectations. So yesterday, I was checking in online for my flight to come here. And I got, as I got to the end of the check-in process, there was no scan barcode through SMS or through email or through an app. And for literally about a second, I thought, well, how am I going to board the flight? as if I'd never picked up a piece of paper from an airport before. So I blame this entirely on technology. So the last couple of years, I've only used my iPhone to get through security. And so it's gone to the point where there are a lot of really interesting companies out there. So I'm sure almost everyone here, if not everyone, has secretly wished at some point in their life for a personal assistant. You might think this is a joke. It actually isn't. There is a company called Manservants. It's geared mostly for women. I'll let you guys read the job description later on. If you're between the ages of 18 and 35, you're a good-looking man. You might want a moonlight. But this is for a woman who wants someone to go with her to a club and protect her from any unwanted attention. It could be for a barbecue or to massage her feet. It sounds crazy, but it exists. You might want to go, because it's raining this week, maybe to the Riviera this weekend and rent a private yacht. You can. This comes from Austria. If you happen to go to a business trip in LA and you're by yourself and you want to go to a dinner party at 8 and you'd like a date, on whim, if you put in your coordinates at by 4 in the afternoon, you have a supposedly normal date by 8 o'clock. <laughs> and then you may think that this is completely mundane, the idea of outsourcing your laundry. And it actually exists as well. This is a new launch. You can actually drop off your cleaning, your dry cleaning, your normal wash, watch the progress and have it come back. And you might think that's insane, but if you talk to the CEO of this company, he said that's what people said about Netflix right before it put a $5 billion business blockbuster out of business. So if you think that outsourcing your laundry is bad, try outsourcing some of your daily tasks. If you don't want to deal with 
making a doctor's appointment or canceling a reservation. You don't feel like actually having any. Uh, you don't feel like getting onto Facebook and saying that you want to like somebody's, you know, comment or on Instagram and like their photo. You can actually text Jarvis. And these are two guys who actually do your work for you. If, as long as it takes 15 minutes or less, you text them your request. You do pay for this. This is not free. Or you might want somebody who's sort of human in your house. So I'll let you watch this. This actually exists as well. Introducing Jibo, the world's first family robot. Say hi, Jibo. Hi, Jibo. <laughs> He's a hands-free helper. You can talk to him, and he'll talk to you back, so you don't have to skip a beat. Excuse me, Anne? Yes, Jibo. Melissa, just sent a reminder that she's picking you up in half an hour to go grocery shopping. Thanks, Jibo. And he's a platform, so his skills keep expanding. He'll be able to connect to your home. Welcome home, Eric. Hey, buddy. Can you order some takeout for me? Sure thing. Chinese, as usual? You know me so well. And even be a great wingman. You have a voice message from Ashley. Want to hear it? Absolutely. Hey, call me when you're home. Better make that takeout for two, Jibo. So supposedly Chibo can actually, I haven't seen it in person yet, an MIT professor, she's in charge of the department, she actually created this and she has a family. It can do facial recognition of your family and take photographs. Uh, it can also read stories to your children, which kind of freaks me out. But um, So we say that we're on the road to the Holy Grail. So a couple of years ago, I have a couple of lives, but a couple of years ago I was running a disruptive innovation group for a media company in the US. And we must have pulled several hundred people on what their unmet needs were. And we heard again and again and again, I want a personal assistant. This was what everybody said, and it's probably no, no excuse here. I literally put on my birthday list one year I wanted a Sherpa, which is a little <laughs> spoiled. But we've been here before. How many remember Cosmo or Webvan? OK, that truly is a cautionary tale. Nobody remembers them. In the late 1990s, early 2000s, Webvan was one of the first ever services out there to deliver your groceries to you. So you know nothing outstanding, but it was a cool service. Cosmo used bike messengers in different cities, and as long as you could fill a backpack with whatever it was you bought and they could deliver it to you, they would deliver it to you within an hour. So a good idea, except at the time when they did an overview of what the expenses were and how much money the companies were making, for every dollar Cosmo brought in, it actually lost a dollar fifty, which meant it lost money in every single customer it brought in. So. Um, Cosmo and Webvan were big companies. They were actually Webby Award winners. They had massive funding. Um, but as you can imagine, it didn't last very long, and they exploded. So this looks like a really bad business plan. So why would we do it again? Well, there's a change. There's two changes. One is technology, and the other is us. So here's a picture from 2000. Any guesses on how much a gigabyte of storage space in the year 2000 cost US dollars? Guesses, anyone, per gigabyte? OK, 15 US dollars. And today, 15, almost 15 years later, how much do you think it costs per gigabyte? Oh, no takers. Three cents. So from $15 to three cents, that's a huge, a 98% reduction in cost. Back in the time, if you wanted to do data analysis and find out who was using your products, you would have a team of people who would call 14 hours a day. Now we have all sorts of analytics software. We have social media metrics. We have all of this. It's really low cost. And when we got the data in 2000, we'd usually have a team of programmers who didn't see the light of day for three months straight. They're all millionaires now, so I don't feel badly about them. But at the time, that's what we needed to create. Now you have all sorts of companies out there. You have um, Squarespace, you have Shopify, you have MailChimp, the list goes on and on of companies that replace the programmers because you can just simply use it. As a result, literally in my building where I live in Munich, every single person is building an app because you can. This is what's changed as well. We have all the sophistication that's at our fingertips. And quick stats, if we go through them, we've changed our consumption as well. Back in 1997, very few people had internet use. Now it's more than 75%. It's almost equivalent of four times the customers for the same products. Same with computers. And in general, technology has gone way up. The iPhone 6, which I just showed you, has been sort of the cause and the savior for a lot of these companies. If you look at the adoption of technology over the years, and you start back with the telephone. Back in the early 1900s, it took 40 years for about 40% of all people to use a telephone. 
fast forward, you can see the different communications methods. The smartphone today was adopted 10 times faster. Within four years, most people were either using or had access to a smartphone. And think about all that power in your hand. And that's not a cheap device. That's 600, 700, 800 euros. But all sorts of people have it. And as a result, with cheap technology, our expectations, the availability of technology, we're starting to see that it's easy to get our unmet needs met. We're starting to get whimsical. And we're getting services developed for us, and we're really beginning to re rely on them. I have no navigation sense. I could probably get lost in this room. I used to develop part of that brain, but now I have Google Maps. And I have the walk portion, you stick it in your ear, it talks to you, it's phenomenal. I don't use my brain anymore, it's like completely withered away because of Google Maps. I used to have CDs way back when I got rid of all of them because I lived in small apartments. Then I got, you know, MP3s and occasionally I would actually put them in a list. I don't even do that anymore. I have Deezer on Pandora, it chooses my music for me, I have a personal DJ. Used to be I would plan to go to a movie, I'd call my friend, I'd call the theater or when they had internet access and some of the um, cinema sites, I would look up the dates. Now I can actually get on my phone, and in Germany, in some cases, I can reserve my ticket, reserve a seat, and even pre-order snacks. And then, of course, I don't have to plan anymore to go anywhere. I can use a normal taxi, or I can use my taxi, or I can use Uber or Lyft, and that's completely transformed short-distance travel. And companies like Blah Blah Car allow me to go long distances um, without using a bus, a plane, or anything else, and I make a friend and get hit on sometimes. So as a result, our standards go way, way up. This is so easy for us that now we expect all this. So a good example is Spoon Rocket in San Francisco. It's a food delivery system. There's tons of them. But what's different about this is they deliver your food on average of eight minutes. So the CTO says that anything over 30 minutes is not on demand. Since when can I not wait 30 minutes for food? I'm not that hungry, but apparently, if I have to wait 30 minutes for food, my needs aren't being met. So I blame companies like this. They're actually telling us that we should expect more. So we looked at Twitter recently, some of our Twitter fans, and we saw what people are asking for. This is what people are asking their phone to do. Charge a cell, feed, unlimited memory. My personal favorite, why can't it take an x-ray of my knee? And then another great one is Apple recently, I don't know if you saw this, put free U2 songs on. U2's great, I love U2. Free songs, um, but not everybody loves U2. And one guy wrote, can you please take the songs off and give me money? for the free songs that you put on my device and I didn't ask you to. So you might say these are crazy internet people. In fact, a friend of mine says they can't even capitalize. What do they know what they're talking about? But we went out and we actually interviewed. We used Harris Interactive in the past month, and we actually asked normal people what they expect. This is what they expect, not what they wish. So people expect, 90% of people expect that when they have a question, it's going to be answered immediately. They don't care if the object comes from China or Thailand or you fish something out of the Indian Sea, they want this to be shipped to them for free, and if they don't like it, they want to return it for free. Most people want to schedule whenever they want it, so that means if you have to have your TV repaired, you schedule, you don't wait Thursday from 8 a.m. to noon. More and more people, which is surprising to me, especially because this means you have to give up personal data, more and more people want suggestions to be made for them, like Pandora, but that means they actually have to watch your behavior, but this is what people expect, you're watching me, so give me something I want. So we have all these people who are expecting so much. They're really, really spoiled, really entitled, kind of scary. So how do we talk to people who are so, so spoiled? Well, there's a couple of tips we have, big or small. And actually, track me down later, because I want to hear more examples from you. These are very American-focused, because this tends to be ground zero for these kind of developments. But there's a lot of great stuff happening here, too, so find me and tell me. But one way is to provide a service. It can be big or small, like I said. A service like Popcart. So Popcart, what it does is you go on to your, it's called Foodly, it's a web uh, website for food recipes, and you can choose what ingredients you want. It's populated automatically into a company called Fresh Direct, who then delivers the food, the recipes, and everything at your timeline. It can be something so simple as a brand extension, so Kleenex, the tissue company, actually has a flu tracker. So it follows when the flu is going to come to your town next, so you can prepare to wash your hands and ostensibly buy tissues. Same thing for allergy medication in Germany with Hexel. With it, they have a pollen tracker, so you can tell what you're allergic to, which I'm always trying to figure out what I'm allergic to in Germany. Johnson & Johnson is a personal care product, so why would they be doing any kind of fitness app? 
Well, because it helps to create well-being. It's a service. Johnson & Johnson wants you to buy their personal care products. They want you to feel healthy. So this is a way to tell if you're healthy or not. Extremely popular. People love it. It's a seven-minute workout you can do in the office. And then a company like Toyota in Norway doesn't have enough actual Toyota dealerships, so people can come in and try the hybrids. So what do they do? They ask their hybrid owners in Toyota to go to their Facebook friends and invite them for a test drive. Did anybody see this campaign? So no, it's, it's, it's only a couple of, it was 5.5 million in Norway. So I think 2.8 million people participated in this. Another way, if you're going to make a service or not make a service, just make people's lives easier. So Avion has the money to do this, not everybody can do this. But Avion took advantage of really hot days in New York City. And this summer, in August, they actually set up booths around the city. And all you needed to do was tweet your coordinates. So ostensibly, you were not sitting next to a refrigerator somewhere. You were in a hot park. And you said, this is where I am. And then within five minutes, a bike messenger came with an icy cold bottle of water. And then for the journalists among us and the content creators, when you always want someone to take something of your writing and tweet it or put it on Facebook and promote it, Medium came up with a method you can actually snip parts of the content and automatically put it on Twitter, uh, Twitter or uh, Facebook, which seems pretty obvious, but it's been hard to do until this point. A very simple way to make our lives easier. And then just something so delightful, as someone uploading a picture on Instagram, one of their favorite pictures, Nike created an ID, a photo ID program, where it would match your photo with a design and a color similar to your photo, but in the shoe. So it was sort of custom-made shoe, but not really. They were really developing new shoes for each customer. Again, simple ways to make people happy. Then there's customer service. Um, because people have such high expectations, they really want someone to serve them personally. And that's hard to do sometimes. So how do you do that? Good example is Nordstrom. It has a famous return policy. Nordstrom is a very high-end department store. And they notoriously will re re accept anything back that you've bought in their store without a receipt. But their demographic is changing. People aren't going to the store anymore. They're shopping online more and more. So Nordstrom thought ahead and said, how can we create this kind of customer service online? Because we're not going to hire a team of people. They bought a company. They bought Trunk Club. And you've probably seen a lot of this in Europe as well. Trunk Club is a company that pre-selects clothing for men, ships it to the man, man can decide whether he wants to keep the shoes, the pants, the belt, and whatever he keeps, he keeps. Anything else he doesn't, he just sends it back. Free shipping, free returns. So all those things people expected in our poll, they're doing it. This exists elsewhere. It's outfittery in Germany. And then another twist is ASAP 54 from the UK. So I like your jacket right there, your white jacket. I could take a picture of it right now, and I could upload it. And my network and ASAP will tell me where I can find that. And if they can't, there's a team of stylists who will tell me where I, where I can find something similar. Amazing customer service. Kind of creepy. <laughs> then, of course, do you remember Sochi last year? The hotels weren't quite ready for prime time. I don't know if any of you went there, but um, there were a couple problems with the hotels. So Yahoo Sports Rider was there, and it got to the point where he literally was trying to barter three light bulbs for a door handle. <laughs> so. Customer service. Airbnb didn't go out and buy door handles or light bulbs and ferry them over. What Airbnb did was say, hey, Dan, there's actually an apartment down the street that has light bulbs and a doorknob, and you can stay there. Um, good idea. I mean, they won an award for this because um, it was very clever. At the same time, I don't know how many apartments in Sochi looked like that and had light bulbs and doorknobs, but it worked for Dan. And lastly, if it's anything else, just make a person feel like they can smile. There's something kind of fun. Just lighten their day. An example of a way to create love for people with high expectations is to give them a little treat. So an example is Volkswagen paired up with Google this summer. And uh, when you went on a road trip, Google would um, track where you were going through Volkswagen and give you a travel log at the end. So it showed your route, the average speed, and even pictures from your trip. So it's sort of like the old road trip books you used to make 30 years ago, but it's digital. Another cool thing is just using big data is Spotify, which watches your music habits, has now hired an artist and resident who lives in hipster land in Brooklyn, New York. And what he does is he looks at all the behavior of people on Spotify. He can actually track when people click on the same track, the same piece of music at the same time. And he's created this sort of travelogue of music where if you go online, you can see in real time 
people here in Stockholm and then, I'm sorry, Gothenburg, and then down in Naples, Florida, clicking on the same music at the same time, you can listen to it. Just a delightful little trick. But people have high expectations of being told what they can see and how it could be served up to them. So now we've learned that all these people have these amazing expectations. I mean, it's incredible. We've never seen this kind of demand before. So what's happening next? More expectations. We went back to our poll and we asked people what they expect, not wish, but expect in five years. So people want same-day delivery of things you might find on Amazon. They're not asking for custom-made furniture to be built and delivered in one day, but anything you can find on Amazon to be delivered. And yeah, I guess it's coming. You know the drones are out there delivering right now? Google and Amazon have drones. So 76% 76 of people want that. It's coming. 71% want the wearable technology, you know, Fitbits and jewelry and all that sort of thing, to tell them, when your heartbeat's going faster, what can I do immediately to lower my heartbeat? Half people want to get rid of customer service, which I find kind of amusing because we have that now. It's when you go to the automated menu and it tells you hit zero and nobody answers, hit zero and nobody answers, hit zero and nobody answers. But this is actually happening as well. You're getting intelligence, artificial intelligence, who's replacing a person. So people expect this to really happen in the next three to five years. Scary, but true, 40% of people want to outsource their child care to an app or their pet care. I don't know how much of their child care, presumably not raising the child, but you know. But 40% expect this, this will happen. And a little bit more is, again, this predictive artificial intelligence that somebody's going to know what you want before you ask for it and actually deliver it to you. Again, this is an expectation. It's not all scary, sort of scary, but there's small things we can do today, which is, again, give people a service, big or small, feel like they're being listened to, make their days easier, be sure to focus on the customer and feel like they're number one, and then make them smile. And then hopefully, like my presentation, be quick about it because the expectations are only getting higher faster. So that's it. Thank you for your time, and please track me down with examples. Thank you very much. Thanks. Very interesting. And uh, just let me ask you first, uh, do you think that we as customers have too high expectations? Are we sort of trusting too much in the services that we are uh, working with? It's interesting. It's, for an American, especially me living in Germany, it's really interesting because, of course, we had the NSA surveillance uh, issue that happened. Americans are very free with our data exchange. And so we are, this is something we do expect, um, but depending, I've lived in France and Germany, it's very different there. Um, so yeah, I think Americans do expect too much and not realizing where, where it's going. And perhaps, or at least where I lived in France and Germany, they're expecting too little because there's, there, there is stuff that can be done without actually giving a lot of your privacy away. It's just general behavioral targeting. Right. Any comments on uh, Twitter? Yeah. Quite a lot of comments. People have been tweeting a lot of quotes and observations from your speech. Uh, someone, I think it was Joel, thank you for all the t telling him about all the uh, web services that I didn't know about before. Um, but more than anything else, people seem to love Jibo, the personalized uh, <laughs> family robot. Uh, so I think its makers will have a great market here once it's been released. And there's one question here. Uh, what happens when you fall in love with your personalized, personalized Jibo? It <laughs> will happen. We were just Maybe it's even an expectation, I don't know. We were just talking about that last night because, you know, did you see the movie Her? Spike Jones movie Her? And it was a Scarlett Johansson playing the sexy voice of a bodiless artificial intelligence. Actually, probably not far from the truth. We didn't put that in our stats of are you going to fall in love with your computer, but um, I'm sure it's happening. Um, going back to the, to the thing you started with, the, the Lovey Awards, what would you like to happen in Sweden now uh, going forward? How much, what, what would you like, love to see from this audience and other online uh, initiatives? What, what would you like to have more of from, from the Lovey Awards perspective? For, the, for two things, actually, for the Loveys. One is that we really, truly want to represent excellence. It doesn't have to be innovation. It's just, you know, across those categories we mentioned, we really want to be able to show people something aspirational. So if it really is going to be something in the website category and maybe it's best content, what really represents excellent content, even if it's not even designed, designed beautifully, it's just really good content. So that means other, everybody else can say, that's what I want to be. 
The second thing I would say, and this is actually more of a personal thing, I really want to see diversity. You know, I'm, I'm a woman, as you might have noticed. I'd like to see more, you know, women participants. Technology can be very, very male heavy, especially in startups. And I'd love to see more women participate, you know, people of different age, background. And so we have this academy where they judge uh, products. And I'd love to see more diversity in our academy. I'd love to see more diversity in our products and our leaders and our speakers. Great. We'll think about that, and, and everyone is open to uh, or, or invited to participate and, and yes. contribute. And thank you very much, much for coming. And, and you're going to stay for a while yes. and, and uh, have continue the discussion through the cocktails or Absolutely. drinks or uh, the music later on. Yes. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks for, for coming. Thank you. In. Thank, thank you, you very thank much. You. Thank you.